A fossil proves fish to tetrapod evolution. Oh, aren't you excited? Before that, we were all worms. Open flagrant bigotry in both academia and in our mailbag. This is Genesis Week. And a welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the origins controversy made possible by the supporters of CORE Ottawa, citizens for origins research and education, and exclusive right here on YouTube. Pirate broadcasting live from Superman's former secret fortress of solitude in the Canadian high Arctic. We're a little worried about what's going to happen with our broadcast with all the solar flares going off and us being in the Arctic and stuff. But we'll keep broadcasting the information the anti-creationists don't want you to see or hear. And we'll give glory to the creator while doing it. Once again, number one most talked about show on science and technology on YouTube. You can find us at wazulu.com or genesisweek.com or click the ever so convenient subscribe link up top. And don't forget, you can also peruse other episodes by following the links in the upper corners of each episode. I'm your host, Ian Juby. Stop me if you've heard this before. Foot fossil dates life's emergence on land. Fossil pushes back land animal debut. Fossil discoveries fill crucial gap in land animal evolution. Scottish fossil trove shows when sea creatures started walking. Oh, how exciting! What are they talking about? Tiktaalik? No, but they are talking about another fossil in the long line of alleged fishapods, which it seems I've wound up talking about for like five or six different shows. You'd think the press and these particular evolutionists would have learned their lesson by now, but nope. So, what is it they're excited about? Well, it is a pretty spectacular fossil find to be sure. Found in Scotland, these fossils allegedly fill in the famous Romer's Gap, which was named after Dr. Alfred Romer, an American paleontologist who noted missing fossils in the fishapod timeline between 345 and 360 million years ago. Smithson et al. reported on the Scottish fossil finds in the latest PNAS, and the fossils have been assigned to the precise evolutionary age of 348 to 347.6 million years old, give or take a week. Particular excitement was over a fossil foot which had five toes. Devin Powell of Science News explains. This is the earliest and smallest foot ever found with five digits, says paleontologist Jennifer Clack of the University of Cambridge, England. It tells us that terrestrialization occurred much earlier than we had a hint of before. Feet with five toes tend to be good at bearing weight and rotating on land, she says. The specimen, 20 million years older than any known five-toed fossil, is just 10 millimeters across and comes from an unknown species. Even in the PNAS article itself, the authors allude to the fact that this is the earliest evidence of a fossil five-toed foot. Thus, although Romer's gap is closing, we have lacked information about the crucial early part of the period during which terrestriality, defined simply as the ability to support the body and locomote completely out of water, may have been achieved. Wait, let's take a look at the evolutionary time scale involved here. I discussed this extensively on previous shows, but apparently these researchers don't watch this show and thus miss out on the valuable information we bring you that the anti-creationists don't want you to see or hear. Here's a pretty diagram showing how the evolution myth portrays fishapod evolution and the approximate age that has been assigned to the five-toed five fossil foot that was just reported. Now, as we go left to right on the chart, we go through the evolutionary time as the fishies attempt to grow legs and walk up onto land, allegedly culminating in the five-toed foot. Now, this gradual progression of evolution looks impressive in pretty pictures. To falsify this myth, all we have to do is show that there were already five-toed tetrapods before any of these creatures in the evolutionary timeline. And that is precisely what was already done years to decades earlier. In 2010, a report was published by evolutionists 
of fossil tetrapod footprints in Poland dated 395 million years old, according to the evolution myth. Those footprints were actually first found in 2002, and take a look and count them yourself. One, one toe more, two, two toes, three, three toes more. Okay, never mind. One, two, three, four, five toes. But yet the creationists were way ahead of the pack, with geologist John Mackay publicizing fossil tetrapod tracks in the Tapete Sandstone of Grand Canyon in 1987. The Tapete Sandstone is dated, according to the evolution myth, as 525 million years old. That is way off the other end of our chart. Notice that the Scottish researchers have interpreted the fossil foot as having a re reduced fifth toe. Also notice that the Polish researchers interpreted the same thing from their footprint, and also the reconstruction of Pandorichthys has a reduced sixth toe. Looking at the Tapete's fossil footprints, it appears it also has a reduced fifth toe impression. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five toes. The Scottish researchers mentioned, we conclude that Romer's gap in the fossil record has been an artifact of collection failure. Really? Could it be that the collection failure was caused by preconceptions and assumptions of evolution, which has hindered proper research? Because predictions based on the evolution myth would say you will find no tetrapods in older rock formations. Indeed, it is a collection failure, and I lay the blame at the feet of the evolution myth. We have still yet another example of how evolution has hindered scientific research and discovery, discoveries that falsify the evolution myth and affirm that creatures like the tetrapods have been around since the beginning of creation, just like the Bible says. Gee, I wonder what else the Bible is right about. Hot off the presses, your ancient ancestor was a worm! Morrison Caron, publishing in Biological Reviews of the Cambridge Philosophical Society, described more detail about a famous worm from the Burgess Shale of British Columbia, Canada. This worm-like creature is called Pacaya, and a few years back I participated in a research trip to the Burgess Shale with Harry Nyborg, owner of the Big Valley Creation Science Museum, Vance Nelson, the owner of Canada's tra largest traveling creation museum with Creation Truth Ministries, and of course, yours truly. Now, it's been around for years, or it's been touted for years, that Pacaya is our ancient ancestor because it has a notochord, a soft, flexible, tube-like spine. Morrison Caron made some interesting discoveries upon examining multiple fossils under an electron microscope. In the Royal Ontario Museum press release, Caron said, But the real excitement was finding extensive myomeres, the blocks of skeletal muscle tissue that are characteristic of chordates. You and I, of course, are chordates. Morris and Caron held nothing back in their press release. The discovery of myomeres is the smoking gun that we have long been seeking. Next time we put the family photograph on the mantelpiece, there in the background will be Pacaya. It's very humbling to know that swans, snakes, bears, zebras, and incredibly, humans all share a deep history with this tiny creature no longer than my thumb. It was very interesting that while at the Burgess Shale, Vance Nelson noted that Pacaya held a suspicious resemblance to the modern sea lancelet. In fact, some evolutionists have noticed the stark similarity too, but the evolutionists pointed to minor differences such as the lack of antennae on Pacaya. However, a study by Purnell et al. in January 2010 of Nature article actually examined the decay of dead sea lancelets and discovered to their shock that the decay of organisms can give a false story of evolution. Their point was that it was assumed decay would take place at random and their research showed decay was not random. In fact, it turns out that the very characters of organisms that are used by evolutionary scientists to determine the organism's placement on the evolutionary tree were the first characteristics to rot away. So, in the case of the sea lancelet, while some evolutionists have contended that the lack of antennae on Pacaya means it must be a different organism than the sea lancelet, look for yourself. The antennae was one of the first things to rot away on a dead sea lancelet. Thus, Pacaya is probably just a slightly decayed sea lancelet, dead only a few days. So, rather than proof that we, and all the other organisms with backbones, evolved from a worm, 
It appears to be more evidence that even organisms from the Burgess Shale, allegedly some of the oldest fossils in the world, have reproduced faithfully after their kind since the beginning of time. Exactly what the Bible says, and contrary to what evolution would predict. Gee, I wonder what else the Bible's right about. In another case of flagrant open bigotry in academia, Springer Verlag, publisher of many scientific journals and books, had scheduled to publish a book entitled Biological Information, New Perspectives, which was co-edited by Dr. Jonathan Sanford, co-inventor of the gene gun and a young Earth creationist. The Pandas Thumb website pointed out this book and Sanford's intelligent design leanings, and suddenly the book was yanked from publication. The book had already been peer-reviewed, twice! But upon finding out that one of the book editors was an intelligent design advocate, Springer pulled the book from addi for additional peer review, with Merkel Sorbata stating that Springer was unaware of the editor's roles in the intelligent design movement, and Springer does not, quote, endorse intelligent design as a legitimate area of scientific research, end quote. Notice there was not a single thing found wrong with the book, scientifically speaking. It had already passed peer review. This is nothing less than open, flagrant bigotry. Even in the comments of my videos here, anti-creationists ridicule creationists as never doing any original research, which is patently false and incredibly ignorant, seeing as how many creationists have published in secular literature, and there are four peer-reviewed scientific journals published by creationary organizations around the world. Secular academia has even openly admitted in print that it will not publish creationary material, regardless of its scientific validity or merit. Therefore, the claim that creationists don't publish in peer-reviewed journals is not just incredibly ignorant and untrue, it has nothing to do with whether or not the creationists are right or whether or not what they are saying is scientific. In fact, the Evolution News website had a couple of fascinating, well-written articles on the bogus criticism of lack of peer review. It isn't peer review anymore. It's peer pressure. And peer review is just another avenue for the flagrant bigotry that goes on in academia toward anyone who dares question Darwin. Well, guess what, folks? I'm here to question Darwin, and you can see some of my many scientific reasons why I doubt Darwin. And if Darwin was wrong about evolution, I wonder what else he was wrong about. Woohoo! Mail for me! I wonder what it tastes like. <laughs> wow! Last week's show was catapulted to number one most discussed video in science and technology again. There was no possible way for me to go through all the comments. Sadly, the anti creationists once again lowered the bar with their comments that had IQ factors coming containing very large negative integers. L.A. Wilson was spouting off about polystrate trees being in situ when I clearly refuted that idea, even showing photographs so that you, the viewers, could see for yourself that the roots that are there have been stripped of their rootlets and some were upside down. They were not in situ. Wilson went off on some tangent about the Alberta beds being laid down on the ocean floor, which I never said. In fact, it would appear the giant plants the size of trees would not be buried on the ocean floor along with dinosaurs apparently swimming to the ocean floor so they can walk around and leave footprints? Wow, Wilson! Really? Wh where did you get this idea? You didn't get it from me! <laughs> Fusion840 also replied to one of L.A. Wilson's ridiculous assertions with, So far we know, according to the sources, that the layers represent time. USGS, NPS.gov, we know that the fossils found in them are represented by the rock. Berkeley source and jstore.org. We see, all over the world, evidence of trees through these rocks. Ian is simply saying that the trees prove that the layers are not millions of years old, but buried rapidly. Fossilmuseum.net slash fossil record slash fossilization slash fossilization.htm. Press Control F and simply type rapid. It's all over the page and the entire web. Yes, in fact, in last week's show, I even cited the ages assigned to coal formation. But apparently, neither L.A. Wilson nor anyone else who doesn't want to believe listened to that part. But hey, thanks for trying, Fusion. I hope you were wearing a helmet for all that beating of your head against the wall. 
As for Derek Ager's comments about the cat catastrophes interspersed with long periods of time, I thought Chris Carlescio did a great job dismantling that idea. Sometimes geologists don't know the difference. Derek Ager said that the rate of de deposition for siliceous ooze was as little as 0.05 grams per square centimeter per thousand years in the tropics to as high as 50 grams per square centimeter in the Gulf of California. The polystrate tree through siliceous deposits shows that he was wrong. That's the point. They're people, and like anyone else, they make mistakes. The Science Foundation also failed completely to see his own blindness and misunderstanding, affirming by his comments that apparently he believes the laws of nature were very different at the beginning and don't apply to the first replicating system. An alleged system that has never been demonstrated by he or anyone else. As Ben Walburn noted, Laugh Out Loud, the Pseudoscience Foundation is talking about untestability in creation science. It's a shame he doesn't realize that evolution is untestable at best. Indeed, but I wish these guys would stop and think, see the error of their ways, and repent of their sins while they can. Berisham wrote in, Incredible how the anti-theist hate crowd just keeps coming back to Ian's videos to slander and hate. As a former atheist myself, I find it astounding that the anti-theists are so stubborn, willingly blind, and keep avoiding to use their God-given reason. When I was told the gospel by my aunt, I told her that I'd believe in the Bible, God and Jesus, if I had proof for them. Thing is, God gave me the inner proof of faith before I mathematically understood that DNA couldn't form by itself. Awesome stuff, good job. Some very awesome points, Ian. Keep doing what you do through Jesus. And thank you for writing in, folks. F at 510, there really was no subliminal message. It was just a joke. Yeah, I kind of goofed there. I accidentally left it in from the editing file the week before and missed it in the previews. But several eagle eyes caught my mistake. Well done. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. I'm your host, Ian Juby. I hope you'll join me next Thursday. Please subscribe up top and use the convenient share button down below to post this video on TwitFace Plus or to embed it on your blog or website. Let us remember the words of our creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. We'll see you on the flip side. Production software was provided for Genesis Week by the Big Valley Creation Science Museum, located just 25 minutes north of Drumheller, Alberta, in the heart of Dinosaur Badlands. The Big Valley Creation Science Museum was built from the ground up to give credit to our creator, portraying the scientific evidence showing that creation is the faith that fits the facts, and evolution is the faith that the facts have failed. Visit bvcsm.com for more details.